Well, good afternoon. Welcome to this confirmation service. We are glad you're all here, and we're also glad for the gift and technology that allows friends and family that can't be here today to be with us and join with us in that way. So welcome to our saviors this afternoon. While this day is later than you had anticipated, it looks a little different than you had anticipated. It is no less meaningful and it is no less special because today is a day that you publicly affirm your faith and that's important. And also today, though the rest of the congregation is not joining us, their prayers and their thoughts are with you today and they're with you always. So don't forget that. Today we will be serving Holy Communion as you leave worship. So we'll have the words of institution here and prayer, but you'll receive communion when you leave. Um, you just pick up either there's wine in a wafer, there's grape juice in a wafer, and there's also gluten-free wafers. So we'd ask that you would take that. Um, we will say the words, the body of Christ and blood of Christ given for you, and you can have that as you leave worship today. In our prayers today, uh, we remember that there are some family members that cannot be with us for various reasons, health reasons, or the numbers that were able to be here. And so we remember them today. We also remember today Taylor Hansen cannot be here. Um, just because of the rules of quarantining, he can't be here. But he is very much a part of this class, and he will be confirmed as a later date. So Taylor, if you're watching, we miss you today. But remember that those who can't be here today, each and every one of them is part of your life, and they are right here. So they are with you in that way. So with that, we will begin worship um, with our processional hymn. While we can't sing, we hear a mighty fortress is our God. stand for the confession and forgiveness. We worship as we live in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We take a moment for reflection. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together. Blessed God, you have called these baptized young adults to affirm their faith in you. Give them joy in their confirmation, peace in their hearts, and courage as they live their lives for you. Send them and all of us into the world to serve you in everything we do for the glory of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I see your fingerprints, the work of your hands, it's all in your hands. I see the evidence, leaving nothing to chance, the world's in your hands. So I rest in your promises, now I'm sure of this, I'm yours. Waters rise, I will stand as the oceans roar. Let the earth shake beneath me, let the mountains fall. You are God over the storm, and I am yours. I hear the voice of love calling me home to where I belong. It cripples every fear. And the ones who will kneel will walk away healed. So I rest in your promises. Now I am sure of this. I'm yours. No, no power strong enough to separate me from your love. I'm yours. So let the waters rise. I will stand as the ocean. Let the earth shake beneath me, let the mountains fall. You are God over the storm, and I am yours. Even the thunder and the wind obey at the command of my Father, Father. I set my feet upon your mighty name. So let the rain fall harder, harder. So take my everything, my flesh and blood. I lay me down on the altar, altar. I am forever covered in your love. So let the rain fall. So let the waters rise. I will stand as the oceans roar. Let the earth shake beneath me, let the mountains flow. You are God over the storm, and I am yours. Let us run, I will stand as the oceans roar. Let the earth shake beneath me, let the mountains fall. You are God over the storm, and I am And I am.
One thing I forgot to say in the announcements that I wanted to mention is that if you took any of a group picture of, of us when we were up here before on your phone, would you please text that to me? I know a couple of people in the back would like a copy of that, so please text me any group pictures or other pictures you take when they're up front. I would really appreciate that. Let's continue with worship. A reading from Romans chapter 12. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the states. In, uh, to contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Know if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will keep burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 146. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers, in mortals in whom there is no help. When they breathe their last, they return to earth. And in that day, their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them, who keeps promises forever, who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the captive free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. The Lord sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. We continue with our gospel lesson from Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. 
Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Take a deep breath, you guys. This has been a long time coming. It feels real weird since this should have happened, like, what, six months ago? Yeah? <sighs> but we're here. We're here. And I am so excited for this. I've been waiting for this day for like four years since I've been here. I've just wanted to get rid of this class, right? Because now that we're done, that's, that's the last I have. No, I'm kidding. I'm just excited to be a part of this today. So our confirmands wrote faith statements, and they were incredible. And I'm not just saying that. I got to read them all and... Pastor Kathy and I got to have very intense interviews with each of uh, our confirmands. All of mine cried, right? Did yours? Yeah? I just stood behind a pulpit and yelled at them for a while. I thought that was good enough. No, they were great conversations where we got to dig into their faith statements, what they believe in, what they think about, what what they're still wondering about. And I love those conversations. So I wanted to start by sharing a part of a faith statement. So can I get the next slide? This is part of Grace's faith statement. Uh, her and her family put together a slideshow with pictures that, uh, that represented Grace's faith. So we have a picture of Grace at her baptism that event that she affirms today, that our confirmands are all affirming today, and we also have this picture, it's a little dark, but a picture of her at VBS. Now, those two things don't seem to make a ton of sense together, but her baptism led her through Sunday school, through events here at church, through VBS, through confirmation, and has brought her to this day and brought all of us to this day. Next slide. So I thought we could walk through what the questions were that they answered. We had six total questions, and they were, one, how does your faith in Jesus influence your life? Two, who has influenced your faith? Three, what are your favorite Bible stories and why? Four, what does confirmation mean to you? And five, on Confirmation Sunday, you'll receive a blessing. What does that blessing mean to you? And finally, number six, if you had to tell someone why you are a Christian, what would you say? Super easy questions, right? It's just very simple. I mean, I've never struggled with, I've struggled with all of these each and every day, even as a pastor. But I was blown away by what our confirmands had to say. So our first question, I just picked out a couple of uh, sayings from each of our confirmand statements. How does your faith in Jesus influence your life? Blake said, my faith in Jesus influences my life by giving me courage, dignity, and drive. That's inspiration. That's, that's the Holy Spirit working in you, Blake. That's beautiful. Sage said, my faith in Jesus influences my life through impacting and influencing the decisions that I make. It helps me be a better person and do things that are right for me. That's pretty powerful. That's, that's what we hope for, that faith isn't just memories. Faith is impacting who we are. And then we asked, who has influenced your faith? And Addison said, uh, I wake up each morning and look outside and get to see all of the beautiful things God has created. My friends and family have influenced my faith by showing me the way of God 
and taking me to church, Sunday school, and youth choir. That's powerful. <laughs> Not only friends and family, but also just God's creation shining forth her faith. Number three, what's your favorite Bible story? This is always an interesting one because there are so many different ones and we hear all of these different stories. We heard about Moses and uh, the, the Good Samaritan. We heard about uh, the creation story. But I wanted to lift up Callan's Jonah and the Big Fish. I've heard it my whole life and the message is really inspiring. God provides, he rescues Jonah, and Jonah gives thanks. That's a complicated story. That's, there's a lot to that, but you got it. <laughs> That's wonderful. Number four, what does confirmation mean to you? Katie said, the importance of confirmation is being let go from you, your influencers and taking your faith into your own hands how I choose to let it grow within me. That's what today celebrates, that you've all been led through Sunday school and confirmation classes, and you've had to deal with me lecturing to you for hours and hours. But today, you start a new journey in your faith, where you get to take the reins of what God is doing in your life, of what you are doing with God in your life. And Ben said, confirmation is important to me because I feel closer to God. God will guide me, my life by helping me make the right decisions. God inspiring us to do what we're called to do. Number five was on Confirmation Sunday, you'll receive the following blessing. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in blank the gift of your Holy Spirit Confirm their faith, guide their life, empower them in serving, give them patience in suffering, and bring them to eternal life. What does that mean to you? Emma said, Confirmation is not only a proclamation to those around me, but a promise to myself and to Jesus, that I will stand firm in faith, and I will journey my life in a new chapter, with God always by my side. And Cole said, God will guide me through life God will guide my life through his teachings of love. To be more specific, I will love others and I will do my best to do good for others just as God and Jesus have done for us. I don't know if you're getting this picture, but these 10th graders have some powerful faith behind them. They're really paying attention. And we come to our last question. If I had to tell someone why I am a Christian, I would say, what? Bryn said, I'm a Christian because I believe that the Holy Spirit is always with me and rooting for me in life. Gianna said, if I had to tell others why I'm a Christian, I would tell them that I believe in the story, believe in God, and choose to live my life this way because of my beliefs. And Ryland said, if I had to tell someone why I was a Christian, I would tell them that I'm a follower of God and that God has helped me and can help you. They get it. This is incredible. Every time I read one of these faith statements, I'm blown away because as a pastor, I spend way too much time talking. I, I can't simplify these things down. But these 10th graders put these deep understanding of faith into a couple of sentences, a couple of pages, and it's incredible. We often think about how we lead the children in our lives. But we forget just how inspirational these kids are to us. Just how much they can teach us. Just how much their faith gives us hope and life. And that's what I heard in that Romans passage. Paul was talking to the church in Rome and he was trying to explain what the church should look like. He talked about love, he talked about compassion, he talked about hope, and he talked about doing what you can for the people around you. That was Paul's statement of faith. 
And I think when I read our 10th graders' faith statements, I hear the same thing. All of them had something in there about how their faith helps them to help others. Their faith is an inspiration to us. So 10th graders, on this day, we're celebrating you, each and every one of you. We're celebrating the promises that your parents made all those years ago and the promises that you make today, affirming your faith, affirming your baptism. And this isn't the end. We've talked about this a lot. This isn't where your faith ends. That faith statement isn't a final draft. It's a first copy. You get a chance each and every day to keep exploring those same questions, to keep wondering and pondering what God is up to. And we know that because of that gospel reading. It's the end of the gospel of Matthew. Jesus has died and he's been risen and he's about to ascend to heaven and he explains what we're here for to go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You've been a part of that, whether you know it or not, through mission trips, through confirmation, through just being around in this place. But today, you take your next step. You are full-fledged members of this church with us. You take leadership in this church. You get a vote at the annual meeting. But more than that, you become a part of that mission we share a little more deeply. So I wanted to say a, a prayer to end this. It's the baptismal prayer that we say all as a congregation at the end of each baptism. So hear this as a blessing and hear it as a sending. Siblings in Christ, we welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Amen. Set free by the truth of God's gracious love, we pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. Lord of the church, ignite your people with the passion of your love. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, unify us across ministries, congregations, and denominations, and refine us to participate in your activity throughout the world. Increase our concern for those who are most vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of creation, we stand in awe at the works of your hands and praise you for the beauty of nature. Make us good caretakers of all you have given us. May our time in your creation increase our gratitude and increase our faith. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of all in need, search out all who cry to you in distress. Scatter the heavy clouds of illness, depression, and loneliness with your radiant light. We pray for the class, classmates, family, and friends who are quarantined or are sick with COVID-19. We pray for vaccines and treatments for all disease. We pray for family who could not be here today. May our confirmands feel their love. Lord, you know our hearts and what, you eat, what each of us is carrying this day. Send us encouragement, and let us be an encouragement to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of love, on this day, we are grateful for these 10th graders affirming their baptism. Continue to guide and lead them that they may grow closer to you. Give them confidence to use the many gifts you have given them. 
Call us all to action by your gracious and loving word. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. So we continue with the rite of confirmation, and I'm going to invite our 10th graders, all who are being uh, confirming their faith today, to please stand at your pew. And when we do call their names forward for the laying on of hands and blessing, um, we would invite the parents to come forward with them. But these young people desire to make public affirmation of their faith. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism as we come before God to make public affirmation of baptism into Christ. Let us pray together. Merciful God, we thank you that you have made us by your own, by water and the word in baptism. You have called us to yourself, enlightened us with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished us in the community of faith. Uphold us and all your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Now I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I, I renounce, renounce them. them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I, I renounce, renounce them. them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I, I renounce, renounce them. them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, I believe in, in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe, I believe in, in Jesus Christ, Christ God's, God's only Son, our Lord, Lord who, was who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, 10th graders, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of Christ through word and deed, to serve all people, following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. And we'll begin here with Katie, and we'll go this aisle, and then this aisle, and we ask you to respond with the words on the screen. So Katie. Emma. Cole. Gianna. Rylan. Bryn, Blake, Sage, Grace, Addison, Callan, Ben. And now, people of God. Do you promise to support these sisters and brothers and pray for them in their life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. So 10th graders, you may be seated until we call you up, and as you come up, your parents come with you. So let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. 
Amen. Cole Brennan Fort Wangler. Be strong and bold. Have no fear or dread of them, because it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Deuteronomy 31, 6. You can stand on the bottom. I'm a... Stir up in coal the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Gianna Revlin Fort Wingler. For truly I tell you, you can come forward, Gianna. For truly I tell you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Matthew 17, 20. You can lay your hands on her as well. Stir up in Gianna the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Okay, so this is new for all of us. <laughs> so when, um, we'll, we'll be going every other one, so it'll be Dave and then myself, and we didn't explain this to the kids, so do not blame them. Um, so you can stand there, and if you're me, you can come over here. Callan Marie Glazer. Keep alert, stand firm in your faith. Be courageous, be strong. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. O oh God, stir up in Callan the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Benjamin Victor Hohenzi, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, verses 38 and 39. And then parents, place your hands also on. Holy God, stir up in Ben the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Grace Marie Julien, I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord is your God, your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1, 9. Holy God, stir up in grace the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Bryn Mackenzie Nesvold. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as the mortals see. 
They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. 1 Samuel 16, 7. O God, stir up in Bryn the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Rylan Edward O'Neill, be strong and bold. Have no fear or dread of them because it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Deuteronomy 31, 6. Holy God, stir up in Ryland the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Emma Ann Radloff, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, verses 38 and 39. O oh God, stir up in Emma the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Addison Ray Rustin, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. First Peter five seven. O oh God, stir up in Addison the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Blake Jonathan Sukup, I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. O oh God, stir up in Blake the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Sage Ann Wilfert. As the deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. Psalm 42, verse 1. O God, stir up in sage the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Katie Grace Wilker, the Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Psalm 128, 5. O oh God, stir up in Katie the gift of your Holy Spirit 
the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Let us rejoice with these sisters and brothers in Christ. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. Amen. Offering is received um, in the back as you leave in the offering plates, but let us pray together now the offering prayer. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now I invite you to stand as we join in our communion liturgy. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We remember on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it giving it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Christ took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Communion will be served on our way out. We have prepackaged communion. The ones that are homemade uh, have wine and a wafer included in them. And then there are some that are uh, purchased and a little bit fancier. Those contain uh, a wafer and grape juice. And we also have gluten-free wafers back there if that's what you need. So we'll have you released row by row, and then you'll go back and grab that, and you can consume communion outside. Before we leave, I just want to say thank you to our confirmands for being such an inspiration to us, for being such great leaders, and bringing us all that hope and joy that we need right now. So thank you for all that you've done. And now receive this blessing. Holy God has sent his Son into the world to die for us. The same God who created the universe. The same God who inspires us each and every day. And now we eat bread and wine, body and blood. And may it strengthen us for all of our days to come. Keep us growing in the joy of the Lord. Amen. And receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.